Today is Tool Talk Tuesday. I'm Chris, the Idaho Painter. I'm gonna be doing um, my video series once again about tools I would recommend or tools that I wouldn't recommend here on Tool Talk Tuesday. Today I've got three tools in front of me. You can see them. Right here we've got another version of the two-edge knife. I've got the Mallard, American Mallard paintbrush, and then I've got the Corner Plus roller frame. And two of them I would recommend, and one of them I would not recommend. The first item I'm gonna start talking about, it's brand new. It's only uh, been available on just a matter of months. This is a Corner Plus roller frame, and what is is so special about that we're gonna show you right now this frame was designed to be worked with the corner plus rollers if you haven't seen a corner plus roller I do highly highly recommend this roller this is the microfiber version there's a polyester version you can see the fibers go over the corner and if you're painting a room all one color you don't have to get out your brush to do it. and if the ceiling is the same color as the walls you can do all your ceiling cut-ins all your corner cut-ins with this roller and you would typically put it on a nine inch roller and paint your room you wouldn't have to get on a ladder and you wouldn't have to use a brush to do all your corners so there there's a corner plus roller. Now, um, if you're doing multiple rooms, if I'm doing one room, a small room, a small bathroom, I don't mind using a nine inch roller. A lot of people see me using a nine inch roller and they're, why the heck aren't you using an 18 inch roller? You're so slow with that thing. Okay, well, for one reason is I'm using a corner plus roller because I'm doing everything one color. A lot of my recent videos, um, I've been doing um, these dark rooms and I'm using the corner plus roller to fill everything in and, I, and they didn't have a, uh, an option for me to use. But now you can attach two corner plus rollers on here and with two corner plus rollers, you now have an 18 inch roller just like that. So now you have the benefit of two corners that you can, or two sides of your um, 18 inch roller where you can do your ceiling cut-ins, you can do your corner cut-ins with a corner plus roller, but you got the advantage of the speed of an 18 inch roller. Now somebody's gonna um, ask, well, what about the path in the middle that's not getting painted? Well, you're typically rolling down your wall, and as you're rolling down your wall, overlapping, you know, uh, at least 50%, this is eventually gonna fill that empty spot in. Through my testing, it's not a problem at all. Um, and so I know people have asked me about that. They've seen the saying, but it's it's not an issue. So now two corner plus rollers on an 18 inch frame. Now you got the speed and you got the convenience. It is built, it's a durable, heavy duty frame. You can see the construction of it right here. Um, it's got you know a heavy duty steel um, frame right here. The handle of it is, I wouldn't say a big, super strong handle, but strong enough to do the job. It's got the ability to attach it to the extension pole. It does have your compression clamps right here to keep your rollers from migrating or working themselves off. And I definitely will always want my roller frames to have these compression clamps on there so the sleeves stay tight and snug. So there it is. Corner plus roller frame. Um, let me see, I'll look it up and tell you what the price is. All right, so we've got done talking about um, something I would recommend using, the corner plus roller frame. Now we're gonna be talking about something I um, probably wouldn't recommend, and this is the American Mallard. Uh, where could you find this brush? You can find it on Amazon. So um, I'm not sure where else, I believe you can find it on Amazon. I think that's where I bought mine from. And I saw them you know, before in the past at a show, didn't know where to get them, found them on Amazon. I think I paid um, $19.99 for this one. I think I paid um, $11 or $12.99 for this one. And so um, why do they call it the American Mallard? Well, as you can see, it looks like a duck and it's the color of a duck. So somebody that is a duck fan must have created these. But what's the purpose of them? They're supposed to be, it says right on here it, um, in bold green, it's an ergonomic handle. So I guess it's supposed to be a lot more comfortable holding something like this over a long period of time versus holding um, your conventional paintbrush like this. I think the weight of this being super heavy, so the weight is in the um, 
the actual handle and not in the ferrule and the brush. The weight is in the ferrule and the brush here. So I feel like this is more balanced. It's not in, um, it, it's wanting to, you know, tilt its way this way because I feel like it's more balanced. I think this, uh, when you're using this brush, all the weight is in the handle itself and not you know in this area of the brush so this is all solid rubber um, I was wondering um, it was kind of interesting because I think you can actually replace this part of it and you still would have the handle so you can um, buy these a little bit cheaper if you just want to um, toss out your filaments and stuff. But the ferrule itself, I'll start with the filaments. Um, it doesn't say what type filaments they are. It just says it's all paints and stains. Um, it, they're, they're definitely not DuPont filaments. I think they're just um, some really cheap, inexpensive filaments. I noticed um, on the brushes, the filaments are easy to bend, they're um, not flagged, they look like they're just flat, they're not chemically tipped, um, they feel pretty inexpensive. I mean, this one had filaments already coming out of it. All right, so I'm gonna show you, I've got a brush right here, this is a handmade brush in New York, the Premier Brook. Here, here we've got what I would call um, one of the best ferrules on any paint brushes I have ever seen right here. This is a stainless steel ferrule, you can see it looks brushed. It, the mill thickness of it is pretty dang thick. It's crimped very nicely. It's nailed perfectly. Now I'm gonna compare that with the ferrule right here, and this is gonna be stainless steel. It's not going to rust or corrode. This is gonna be a plated metal. So I'm gonna pull the filaments off. It's super, super thin. The crimping on it looks uh, really bad on it. And because it's plated, it is going to rust probably pretty fast. It's gonna rust and corrode. That rust and corrosion is eventually going to you know, work its way into your paint. If you end up you know, taking this thing on and off to do any cleaning and stuff, this ferrule, because it is you know, really thin, um, inexpensive, low quality metal, this is probably gonna splay and save itself outward and eventually not be able to stay on the brush very effectively. The first thing that I thought looking at this I thought this is going to be a real problem I got a bucket right here so your brush typically you can if if you don't have a brush buddy which um, I usually have those on my brushes my brush will hang from the bucket if you don't have uh, you can see I hang from the outside it still can set in the bucket and my brush my handle is going to stay out of the paint if you take this and you set it in your bucket, it just falls down into the paint. There's no way to hang it on your bucket. Now, um, I guess you could hang it like that with the beak right there, um, but you can't set it in your bucket. So if you want the if you want your bristles or filaments in the bucket, it's just going to fall down. This one has the ability to hang on the outside because of the beak. This one does not. It's just going to fall down in your paint, then your handle is going to be a big mess. You're going to be digging through the paint. You could attempt to hang it by that, but you can see it just falls in there. You could attach a brush buddy to it, but then it's going to be, uh, I don't know, it's, wherever your hands are, the brush buddy is going to be in the way. There's really no place to attach the brush buddy to that right there. Another thing I thought you know was pretty interesting about this is the Velcro. And my first thought about the Velcro, that's just gonna get covered in paint. You're not gonna be able to get the paint out of the Velcro. What's the Velcro for? The Velcro is because when you put your brush cover on, the Velcro is what keeps the cover on your ferrule and on your filaments right there. You see, I'm just gonna pull it off and that's how it attaches. But I can, this is literally gonna get built up with paint to the point with, with, after a couple uses where it's not even gonna function. You know, the Velcro won't even function and this is just gonna fall off. So, and it comes, this thing comes in multiple versions. It comes in an inch and a half, two inch um, angle sash, two inch full grip, and it even comes in a three inch model. But I mean, just, the filaments themselves, they're not going to hold much paint. They're not going to re release paint properly. It's going to be kind of an interesting thing. I I'm big on um, looking professional at the job site, using professional tools. 
I'm a little concerned if I showed up with, you know, some tools like this that, you know, my customers might not take me um, seriously. So to me, um, for $19 uh, for this, uh, for, you know, um, the same amount of price, right, the same range, you can get a handmade brush in the USA, a premier um, Premier Brook brush right there. I mean, I think these do say they are 100% made in the USA. So if um, if that's a big deal to you, you know, there you go. There is, um, they say, you know, you can attach it to extension poles. I, for the life of me, I don't know what extension pole like that would go on because there's no threads, um, the two different size poles. It would just push on something. Um, I didn't find anything from the company that they sell an extension pole that these attach to. So something I wouldn't recommend is the uh, American Man, uh, American Mallard paintbrush right there. All right, our last product, we're gonna be talking about another product I would highly recommend. And this is um, the two-edge putty knife. So I'm sure we've all seen the two-edge knife. This is one of my top five favorite tools. This came out a long time ago. I carry one of these everywhere I go and it's a five-in-one tool with a knife all in one. And um, two-edge, um, the owner of this company, he's a professional painter out of um, Florida and he owns the company Zorcorp. He's invented a handful of products and he's now, instead of um, having a five in one, you now have the option to have a putty knife and there's an inch and a half version, a two inch version and a four inch version of a flex putty knife added on to the two edge knife. If you've never seen the two edge knife before, it's a knife that has a quick and easy reversible replaceable blade um, um, knife blade on it so it just slides in there's a button right here on the side you push that button it's kind of spring loaded that's what releases the blade has another button on the side of the knife right here which retracts or closes the blade keeps it locked in position it has a if you want to attach it to your belt or pocket or something like that it has a clip on it right there I personally never once, I don't think I've ever used the clip itself, um, but the five in one, it has the five in one on this version. It does have a loop, which I use the loop to hang them in my vehicles. Um, not sure what other things you'd use that loop for. If you um, have any suggestions, you can put down in the comment section below, but the tool itself is super high professional industrial quality tool. It's all metal construction, things built to last. I personally, I've never broken one of these things before. I've got probably 10 of them in my vehicles, use them, but I do, I, I really love the inch and a half version of the flex one also. So I carry that around because I use that to do um, spackling typically on interior. So when I'm working on an interior, I'll keep this version to go around and patch holes. And so it's nice to be able to patch holes, but if you've got to do any type of cutting, you have the knife available to you. One thing I do really like about the color is before I started carrying the two edge knives, I used to just carry, you know, hides five in one tools and they have a black handle on it. And I would lose them all the time because they'd get drug out of my pocket um, in bushes and stuff as we're working on exteriors around a house. And you could never see the um, black or it'd be very difficult to see it in a bush. And we would lose them. I literally would lose typically uh, one a week and I bought them by the case. Once I started carrying uh, the two edge knives, I've never ever lost one because it falls in a bush, falls anywhere. The orange, you are going to see it. It's going to be um, extremely visible. So I love um, the color. All Zorcorp's products and their brand is orange. Um, he is the um, inventor maker of the roller bucket and the roller tray, which those are pretty cool items too. But I would highly recommend um, the two edge knife and um, the two edge knife with the five and one and I'd highly recommend the inch and a half version of the um, two edge flex putty knife.
There. So there you have it. That was three tools on Tool Talk Tuesday. Um, if you have a recommendation for tools you want me to look at and review, just leave it in the comment section below. We'll be um, typically reviewing a couple tools I don't like and a couple tools that I do like because I think it's really important that you don't go out and um, invest your hard-earned money in tools that aren't going to be effective for you. We want to see you use tools that are make you faster, more efficient, and eventually just make you more money. And some tools will and some tools won't. We'll see you next time right here on Paint Life TV. Oh.